All right, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. It's about a minute away, but, you know, um, might as well start now. Uh, anyways, my name is David Tolley. I'm part of the uh, release engineering team at Groupon. Uh, a little bit about me. First of all, I'm married to, uh, so sorry for the ladies out there uh, who might be interested in that. Sorry to break that to you. Um, my contact information, uh, dtolley at groupon.com, Twitter, David Tolley. A little bit about Groupon. We have about 400 to 20,000 engineers. We hire so many people that it's hard to keep track of. Uh, every day we have about 300 commits that come into our, uh, our code base, our, our main code base anyways. Uh, each commit triggers nine jobs. Uh, each job will run um, several hundred to several thousand tests. And um, a developer, whenever they check in code to whenever they receive the last test result back, only takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So we have a pretty, uh, pretty quick cycle time. Uh, we also have many other jobs that aren't associated with our primary uh, web application. Uh, we have an engineering blog, engineering.groupon.com. And uh, if you're interested, we're always hiring new people, as mentioned before. So I want to start off with giving you a little bit about a, a Selenium timeline, you know, completely uh, skewed uh, from my past experiences. So basically, we, we would uh, run the tests. We would get failures. Uh, we, would, we would present that failure to the developer. And your developers probably never say that this works for me, but not on Jenkins. But to me, they would say, no, this works on my machine. Um, so basically, I would hunt down the build logs. I would search for their build on Jenkins. Um, I would show them the stack traces and everything. And um, the developer would say, you know, this only fails on Jenkins. You know, this isn't a real failure. You know, maybe there's a timeout issue. Basically, they're saying it's not their code that's broken, but it's the Selenium, you know, test framework that's broken. So I had this cool idea of, you know, and a lot of other people have had this idea of, whenever a Selenium test fails, you take a screenshot of that uh, failure. Uh, that way, you can present the stack trace and the failure uh, to uh, your developer. Um, so next time it happened, next time a test failed, I would show them the stack trace, I would show them the, uh, the screenshot, and they'd be like, you know, this, this is cool and all, but, you know, I had to look through all this crazy console log to get the stack trace. I had to, you know, look through all the artifacts to find the corresponding um, uh, screenshot that are related to this failure. And you might not have heard anything I said at all. Uh, so this is not working either, right? Is it? No, I guess not. Sorry, I'm recording. I'm having someone come over. No, yeah, no problem. I can speak really loudly, maybe. Can you hear me? OK, I'll yell. Hi. OK. Um, so uh, I had this really cool idea if, you know, in Jenkins, when you're looking at a test failure, you can, you know, see a detail of that failure. You click on the link. It'll show you the detailed stack trace. So, but what if I was able to combine that stack trace on that page along with the, uh, the screenshot that happened on that uh, particular Selenium failure? That way, when a developer looks at it, you know, they see the stack trace, they see the failure, they have context of that picture. You know, they have all the proof that they need to, to know that you know, this failure is a real failure. It's not a, a Selenium failure or, or a timeout issue or something like that. So I developed this plugin that, uh, that'll do that for you. Um, what I learned from this experience is, you know, data is awesome. You know, the more data you have, you know, the more you can learn from it. But, you know, if data isn't presented in a way where you have context on it, um, it's kind of pointless. You don't really know what you're dealing with. Uh, so I want to give you a, a real world example of this. So this is this will be my stack trace basically, uh, just a you know list of adjectives, you know, describing a picture that's going to be on the next page. So giant, monstrous, absurd, 15 feet tall by 20 feet wide. Um, a brown stuffed cat crammed inside of a UFO, hanging from the ceiling, ceiling of the fourth uh, floor of Groupon headquarters. Uh, WTF, and this has to be a joke. Now, if you saw this, you, you'd be like, oh, someone's pulling a prank on me. There's not really a giant cat hanging from Groupon's uh, ceiling on their headquarters in uh, Chicago. But if you saw this next page, uh, I think the image might be a little weird, but basically it's a cat inside of a giant UFO. But if you saw this, you, you might think, oh, this is. This isn't, you know, real. Maybe it's someone's, you know, art, or maybe it's like someone's desktop or background on their desktop. Uh, you wouldn't know what to make of it. But if you were, you know, able to combine the two, um, kind of like Captain Planet, you know, when your powers combine, you see the stack trace along with the picture, and you do realize that, as sad as I am to say, Groupon really does have a giant cat hanging from our ceiling. Uh, it really is 15 feet tall. It really is 20 feet wide. And if you look at it, you'd kind of think, what the hell is Groupon doing? But we really do have this. Um, so you, you can kind of see here, you know, a picture by itself, you need context. 
and a stack trace by itself, you know, kind of pointless unless you have that visualization that uh, a screenshot can give you. But, um, so you might be saying, you know, this is cool, but how does it relate to Jenkins? Uh, well, it has to do with the plugin, uh, one of the plugins that I created. Uh, it uses the test data publisher and something called test action. Um, basically, a, a test data publisher lets you um, display a test result in you know, a nice way, it gives you some kind of HTML that you can deal with. So what I do is um, I go through every single test failure that happened on a particular build. I then look at um, all the uh, screenshots that were generated on that build, and I link the two together, and I create a new test action that um, gets associated with that test failure. The other test action itself is actually, the constructor is pretty simple. It just takes a uh, test name and an uh, image URL, but the cool stuff happens in the jelly, so whenever you're looking at this failure detail page, the, uh, the screenshot actually gets embedded at the very top of the, uh, of the detail page. Um, so you have the stack trace and the error picture, you know, right there for you. So it kind of looks like this. Um, on the left, you, you've probably used to seeing that little link uh, showing you a list of all your failures on a particular build. Uh, now there's a little icon next to it uh, showing you that there's a screenshot uh, associated with it. And then on the right, you kind of see the, uh, uh, kind of see what it's doing. Uh, it embedded the, the screenshot on top of the stack trace. So you click on the failure, you automatically get the screenshot, you get the stack trace, you know exactly what you're looking at. And so when a developer sees this, they know something really went wrong. But pictures are cool, but let me show you a, a, a real example of this. But one thing uh, you might notice is this is a, another plugin I created, another view. Um, it, it basically lists you know, all your builds in a pipeline. You can get details, test results, all in one cool little spot. Um, if you're logged into it, It'll also um, highlight your particular build. So if you use LDAP or you know, OpenID or something, um, you don't have to go through all the builds. You can just see the ones that are highlighted and, and you know what your build is. But the, uh, the screenshot, the cool part, comes in this right here. Can you see it? Yeah. So you see here next to uh, Selenium FF3, there's a failure in it. It shows uh, one failure right here. So if you click on that, it takes you to this page that you're used to looking at. It tells you the name of the failure, you know what class it's associated with. Um, you still, like I mentioned before, you see this little icon. And when you click on this, you get this cool page. So the screenshot is now associated with the, uh, the, the failure detail page. Uh, if you want to get a bigger uh, view of it, you click on it. It takes you to a, uh, a bigger image. And you know, if you show this to your developer, they're going to have absolutely no way of saying, you know, this isn't a real failure. You know, everything's right there. Everything they need to, need to know is presented right there for them. Let me get back to my slide. So um, as I was developing this plugin, I, you know, I kind of had an epiphany. Um, Selenium can, you know, it, it can crawl our web page. It can take screenshots. And Jenkins can interact with those screenshots, and it, it knows what test it's running at the current time. So wouldn't it be a cool idea if there was a screenshot comparison plugin that you could use to you know, hook in with Selenium, you know, crawl the web page, take a bunch of pictures, uh, hook it up to some kind of image repo, and um, compare the two images together? You know, Selenium by itself is cool. It, it does a lot of functional testing. Um, but the thing about it is if, if the CSS on a page is completely messed up, the page will look completely wrong but the selector might be there so the, the functional test might work. You, you, you have no idea if the page really looks uh, correct. But this is a way to do UX compliance. Um, you know, it, it basically takes you know, that manual aspect. You know, I haven't had a ton of, of manual uh, testers to do regression on every single release. You know, this is a way to do that uh, automatically for you. Um, in my experience, the, the biggest number of bugs uh, in a typical backlog are the small cosmetic bugs. Uh, the reason for that is, is anytime you know a, uh, a money work, uh, making workflow is broken or you know have a bad customer experience, uh, those tend to get fixed right away, right? You get called in the middle of the night, you fix it, you release it, and, and it's fixed, right? They don't stay in your backlog very long. But these small little cosmetic bugs, um, you know, they happen, they get found, you know, they get labeled, you know, extremely unimportant. They stay in your backlog, you know, maybe only two or three people notice it, and you know, it, they get, it kind of go into this void and they never get dealt with. Um, also, it's, they're kind of the hardest um, bugs to find. You know, if you're spending all day looking at a web application uh, in your head, you know, a small little change, you know, 
you think, oh, no, this is how it's supposed to look. You know, you don't recognize that change. In your mind, subconsciously, you make it look like it's supposed to look, so you, you don't catch on to that little change. Um, also, um, going towards, you know, fast development, you know, agile development, continuous, you know, continuous or continual deployment, it, you just don't have time to do that manual uh, regression testing. Um, there's just not enough people and not enough time uh, in, you know, today's, you know, web-based software to do the manual testing like you could in, like, a waterfall process. Um, so some drawbacks that I want to show you about or tell you about, you know, ahead of everything. Um, you know, this isn't a, a plugin or a process to be ran on every single uh, commit that happens. Uh, the main reason is is because if you're comparing, you know, thousands upon thousands of images to other images. It does take a long time. I can compare about 5,000 different images in about 15 minutes, but that's, you know, 15 minutes extra that's going to be added onto your pipeline. So really, you, you kind of want this to run like on your release pipeline whenever you're about ready to release the software. Maybe you have uh, some kind of continuous deployment process goes on. Uh, what happens at Groupon is we have a job called any branch, and basically everybody pushes their code up to any branch. Um, if it has a ref of going to master or merge or something like that, uh, once it passes on the any branch pipeline, we then push that to our master uh, branch, and it runs a completely different set of tests. Well, it can run a completely different set of tests. Uh, so that's kind of where you want it to go. You don't want it to be on every single check-in, just the ones that you're getting ready to release to production. Um, uh, the, one of the biggest drawbacks, though, is um, updating the image repo. Um, I mean, this is great for regression testing, but if you're trying to use this on new feature uh, code or, or uh, new pages that are being developed, you know, those images are going to change all the time, um, especially on an incomplete feature. Um, you don't want to have this enabled because you're going to get a lot of false positives. Developers are going to hate it. It's going to slow down um, production. You still want to deal with that. So really, it, it's made for uh, regression tests. Um, you know, we don't run into this problem, but if you ran on different resolutions, uh, you, you could run into a problem. All of our Selenium's are done on the you know, same type of VM, all the same settings, so we don't really have that issue. Um, another thing you might want to consider is um, I have an option on there to fail or to fail the build or just make it unstable uh, whenever images don't uh, correlate to each other. Um, that's you know, completely up to you, depending on what you want to do. Um, uh, other than that, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, so what kind of happens here? You know, what steps do you need to do to uh, implement something like this? Now, first, as I mentioned, you need a way to create your image repo. Um, the best way to do that is you're already using Selenium for everything. Uh, Selenium can already take screenshots. So all you really have to do is add the uh, take screenshot method um, into your individual steps, and it's pretty easy to do. But this is actually the easiest step in the whole process. Then all you have to do is you know SCP or you know archive those images and you know whatever way you want it to do, and um, you know it's done. It's a pretty easy process. Now the uh, the actual job that houses this plugin and runs, um, as I mentioned, you'll want this to run on your release pipeline. Um, so it's pretty much like your crawler job, so you can use kind of the same script that, you know, crawls your web pages and, and takes the uh, snapshots as you reuse what you already created on the first step. Um, it takes the same pictures and names them the same. Um, you go to the same endpoints. Uh, does a lot of the same things as, as your crawler job. Um, but this is where you configure the, uh, the, the uh, screenshot comparison plugin, and um, you give it the uh, name of or the location of, like, your archive repo. And you give it the location of the uh, in the workspace of where your uh, current images are located. As mentioned before, that it also has a couple of different options you can ch uh, set. Um, one, of the, one of the things you might want to consider is threshold of pixel differences. If your application uses a lot of timestamps in different areas that are you know use a current timestamp, um, those dates and times are going to be different. So you're not always going to have you know 100% uh, parity between pictures. At Groupon, we use a lot of pre-generated assets, so we don't really, really run into that problem. But if you're using, you know, current dynamic data, it, it might be a little bit difficult. So what the what does the uh, the screenshot re plugin really do? Well, it gets all the files that are located in your archive repo, and it gets all the files that are located in your current spot, and it compares them together. It does a, a pixel per pixel um, comparison uh, between the two different things. Um, the cool thing about that is is you know, it catches everything, um, catches, you know, color differences, pixel differences, uh, layout differences. Anything that is slightly off, you know, that, that's not 100% exact between different pixels, it, it's going to catch for you. Um, 
And what it does is it, it prints and also stores in a file um, what picture was different and the percent of pixels that were different. Well, what pixels were different, um, the number of pixels that were different, and the percent that were different. And I just defined, you know, percent different in you know, a really easy way, uh, different pixels, you know, over um, total pixels. So, so take this for example, everything on this page is exactly the same, except for the option that's in the toggle box right here. On the left it says Chicago, on the right it says Baton Rouge, so besides that, everything else is the same. Um, you run this plugin uh, with the two different images, and it, it tells you exactly how many pixels are different, uh, what percent pixels are different, and um, this I don't have a threshold set, so if any uh, pixels at all are different, it, it fails to build. Uh, you, again, you can set that to just make it unstable, just a warning, um, but I've set it up to fail to build. Again, we pre-gen our assets, so unless something really crazy happened, they all should be the same. Again, it, it catches everything, colors, positioning, text. I mean, there's nothing that this won't catch. The only thing that you might run into, is, again, is false positives. And that's really on, only going to happen if, number one, you're, you're running this on, um, on current feature branches that are being developed, or you're um, running this on uh, different screen resolutions or, or something like that. Uh, so again, things to keep in mind if you want to use something like this, um, it, it, it's time consuming, right? You, you can't do this on your, on your uh, commits that happen on every single time. Uh, you really only want this to run on what we call our master or release branches. Um, you need to decide if you want to fail or if you just want to warn whenever the images are different. Um, if there's a percent different threshold that you want to uh, keep in mind, um, it's actually pretty easy to, uh, to generate a percent different threshold. Um, if you run this over and over a few times, you'll, you'll start to understand, you know, what percent difference does a, a timestamp equal to versus, you know, a complete div being, you know, unsaled correctly equals to. And um, again, it, this doesn't work on, on new features. It, this is best for regression testing. Um, but again, it, it's a really powerful tool. Um, if you have a part of your application that's, you know, been the same for a couple of years, um, run this on that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's definitely something I, I want to work on. I haven't had a lot of time to explore that, but I, I do want to keep that. Uh, I, would, I do want to make that option. Just a, just a quick idea. I've been thinking about, you know, starting with the screenshot, uh, looking like I guess, further on in my mind, and watching the one idea that I see is how it's got the options. Running the test all the time, and how to find the screenshot from no Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely that's something to consider. Um, I'm, that's pretty much beyond what I've ever done before, but it sounds awesome. Um, I'll be glad to share the repo with you. Maybe you can take a look at it and uh, you can add on to it. I'm always uh, looking for new implementations. Uh, have you ever tried this on a mobile? I haven't yet. I haven't yet, but uh, with WebDriver, you can take screenshots of mobile apps just like you can uh, a regular um, website. Uh, I mean, all, it does pixel per pixel comparison, so as long as you're able to get the two screenshots, it should be you know, extremely easy to do. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, so I have a, a little bit of time left, so there's a couple of things. Any more other questions about that? I mean, if you're running regression tests, I mean, what should change shouldn't affect your regression test, right? I mean, unless you don't realize that, you know, one part of your app is really connected to the other part of your app, um, the old part should change. Um, as far as... Yeah, definitely. It's a web driver, so um, it's pretty reliable. Uh, if you run your, t like I said, you had to run your test the same way each time. Um, with us, we maximize the test, and it's always run on the same type of um, VM environment. So as long as those are exactly the same, um, you'll be fine. But if you're running on an older version of the browser, or you're running on, you know, maybe a different operating system like Linux versus Windows, obviously the, those display different. So it needs to have parity between the, the test environments, though.
Exactly. It, it does matter. Um, it, it does matter, yes. Um, yes, it does. I want to make it so it doesn't matter, but the current implementation, it does matter. Um, we always run our tests the same exact way. Um, they're always maximized. Um, so it doesn't really affect us, but I do want to build it so it can take a, into account the different uh, resolutions uh, and you know liquid UIs and things like that. But again, I, I'm not an image a process developer, so <laughs> it's a little difficult. Cool. Uh, yeah. So um, you might be wondering now, uh, where can I you know get some of these cool plugins? Um, we have an open source process at Groupon that I have to go through to get these to be able to release to everyone. Um, but if you ping me on Twitter or follow me on Twitter, David Holly, um, I'll post on there whenever they actually get approved. Um, there's also the Groupon Engineering blog. Anytime I get approved, I'll write something on there. Um, but I have a few minutes left, so I want to talk about a couple of other plugins that I have developed, if that's cool with you guys. Um, I want to go back to this. Uh, yes. So uh, we actually use Sauce Labs at Groupon for a couple of our tests. Um, you know, we, we capture the. We don't use it for our main app, but a lot of we have tons of different teams. They use tons of different services. Um, so it would be cool to do. You know, with them you can do like video uh, capture of your entire process. So it would be cool to do. Um, just compare video with each other. It would be awesome. Um, but I definitely would like to look at uh, extending it. Basically, make it extensible, and you can add different services that it compares. It'd be cool. Um, Uh, it, it's all Java based, so basically, um, it, it's a pretty simple algorithm. Uh, it, it basically divides a picture up in different pixels, rows and columns, and, and does a, a pixel comparison between each image. Probably not the most efficient um, algorithm, but it was fast to implement. So, yeah. I can always revisit that later on. But. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, the coolest thing I wanted to show you is uh, or give a little more detail about. Is uh, this new test uh, new view that uh, I created? Um, so the basic default view of Jenkins is kind of hard to really you know find the information that you you want, right? Uh, if, if you have one job that runs on a bunch of different branches like we have, it's and like I said, we have about 300 commits going per day. So every day you have to go through 300 different builds and trying to find the, uh, your particular build. Um, but basically, uh, what I created was it. Um, kind of an, an inheritance uh, between different builds. Uh, so every downstream build will have something called a downstream action, and it adds that action to the parent, um, parent build. And then for, the, for this view, I basically get um, the, uh, the main job that I specify here. I get all the actions that are on that particular run, and um, I link them together um, in this view. And so in here, you can see, uh, you know, you can, you know, see all your different builds. You have all this test information you know, right in the front, like the branch, the author. Uh, if there's multiple committers on this particular uh, build, you get a bunch of that information right up front. And also, if you're again, if you're uh, if you're logged in with like LDAP or OpenID or something, um, if you're associated with this particular run, um, you're highlighted right here. So you don't have to go through you know 300 different builds. You just find the one that's highlighted with your name on it, and you know you're pretty good to go. The cool thing about this is you can expand it. You can get all the uh, the test results from all your downstream builds. Um, you know, all the failures are uh, propagated to the very front, uh, so you don't have to go through a bunch of different console logs. You can link through the uh, the test results uh, right from this uh, this main build. So it's, it basically makes it easier for developers to kind of manage this on their own instead of them having to hunt through console logs and, and uh, test outputs. Uh, everything's just kind of presented for them in a nice, uh, neat way. Also, uh, one thing that I'm currently working on right now is a uh, uh, a build uh, uh, build status action uh, that I'll run on the parent job where it links. Like I said before, I uh, I was able to link all the downstream builds together through a test action, and so this is a little URL pasted onto the uh, the build number of your parent job that you can link to in an email or a chat or a view board or something like that. Uh, it gets so it's completely unstyled right now, so don't mind that. But um, it gives you all the detail of your uh, your particular build in one easy to view spot. Uh, the you know duration, the statuses, the uh, if you have any errors, it prints out the errors. This will all be hidden between a toggle. But um, it's pretty cool. You can just look at this and you know exactly what's going on. 
Cool. Well, again, my name is David Tolley. I'm with Groupon. And um, yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter. Look out for the, uh, the plug-in releases. And uh, thanks for letting me talk.